I am going to maybe chop it about there. And I kind of forget they exist a little bit though, so whoops. I think I'm just getting down on myself about it a lot recently, which can be quite tough. Oh my god, is it magnetic? Almost any leaf I go onto has at least one, if not more. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh! Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am starting a day in the life sort of video. It is quite early here, not even at 9 a.m. yet, and my day has begun. It began at 6 a.m. because Cleo decided to have zoomies then. Um, mildly annoying, but I've been up for a little while now just giving myself time to relax and do a bit of like ad mini stuff, plan my week. Oh, where's my notebook? So far away got my my weekly plan up here I don't even know if you can see it but got my weekly plan um, so I know everything that I need to do this week um, in terms of job stuff um, but there's also some things that I need to do plant stuff oh my goodness I didn't even write this on there I need to post plants yeah I've got some plants that I need to send out that some of you have bought off of me from that list of plants that I was getting rid of so I need to do that today. I desperately, desperately, desperately need to sort my Monstera Dubia moss pole because it is literally, it's over at the top at this point. It has grown so freaking fast. I cannot believe, sorry, fungus net. Um, I cannot believe how fast this plant, it's like putting out a new leaf every single week. So I need to do something with that. Um, and I figured I'd bring you along with me with that. Um, and then just other random bits and bobs, keeping up with watering, um, taking care of some things, probably doing some pest treatments, just, just carrying on with the sort of usual, and I thought this would be a good video to do that you could all just like grab some plant chores and do along with me. Hopefully I can motivate you to do some of yours too, because sometimes it's good, um, to have a little bit of someone to do them with, like body doubling, if you find that helpful. I definitely find it helpful when I need to do plant chores. I just chuck on a YouTube video of like Claire doing plant chores and I'm like, yes, this is great. So yeah, I'm going to stop rambling now, but before we get into the proper video-ness, I want to say if you're new here and you don't know me already, hi, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with your houseplanty journey, follow my house lady journey and maybe learn something along the way stick around watch more of my videos and subscribe to my channel if you're not new here thanks for coming back i really appreciate it and yeah let's get on into the video <laughs> this is the <laughs> gloriousness that is my monster dubia it just goes on for freaking ever and so this bit at the bottom is on a plank then i've transformed it to a moss pole and then a moss pole extension what i think i'm going to do is i am going to maybe chop it about there remove these bottom leaves which is a bit of a shame but it's fine and then put this moss pole into a new pot and add an extension on top it's gonna grow past this extension really really quick but uh, it'll be okay we'll figure it out when we get there but i think that is the current plan with this i think because this part's not actually grown into the pole they were just pins holding it in place i can Go from the point where it's not attached. So here. And then I should, in theory, be able to slide this off. Oh. The thing is, the roots from this bit might be going down into here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
what do I want to do? I think I'm gonna have to do a bit. Oh, actually, that was that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. If they break a little bit, that's fine. Um, so yeah, I've got this piece, and then this whole bottom bit is one as well. And I think I'll probably like save this for the plant swap, and someone can have it from the plant swap. Because like I I don't need this bottom bit anymore which I think I'm okay with because I've got this bit to grow how I want it to grow, which is kind of more important to me at the moment. Um, take that off. I don't think I'm dealing with thrips on this one anymore, but I very well could be. Okay, so now we need to remove these leaves off the bottom bit because I'm essentially going to put this entire bottom bit of the vine into the soil in hopes that all of the aerial roots, or like the nodes, will root into the soil. I think that makes plenty of sense. And it's a bit of a shame that I have to remove those leaves, but it's fine. I'm gonna remove this leaf as well. And I'll need to remove the bottom section of moss because that's what's going to be inside of the pot which I have here I've got two sizes because I didn't know which one would fit better probably the small one because I don't think it's going to have tons and tons of roots so I don't want to give it too much space all at once so I'm just going to remove as much of the moss from this bottom section as possible up to approximately the pot heightness. And like there are some, there's definitely some roots coming in here, which is great. Cause that means those will grow into like the soil and like anchor it in a bit better. Cause that is one of the more difficult things with propagating like from a pole like this is all of the roots are within the moss not within the soil so it's not actually got anything to hold it into the soil at the beginning which is a little bit more difficult but yeah these moss poles um the plastic ones these are from the plant point which they sent me like a while ago when i did my sort of jungle cactus haul thing they sent me the fern leaf cactus and some other lovely like ripsalis and stuff they sent me these and honestly they are really decent moss poles if you don't want to do the whole like wire mesh thing and plastic backing these work absolutely fantastically and are super easy to use and like super adjustable as well which i'll show you in a second when i'm pulling the other one out but i will link them down below if that's something you're keen on trying if you're in the uk highly recommend because they do work really really well i think i'm at a point where that would be fine like that i think i'm gonna use the small one yeah okay let's pull the camera up a bit because i don't need to lay this down anymore and oh oh i should cut these off that's what i should do yes i know what i'm doing now cutting these off because they don't need them to attach them to another pole. So I do need to take out some more of this moss. Okay, this makes sense. Because otherwise it's a little bit unstable because there's like... These are mostly meant to connect two moss poles together. From my understanding. I could be wrong about that, but... That's... That makes the most sense to me. I don't really like having moss underneath the soil in a moss pole because then the soil stays too wet because I water the moss really frequently and if I have that going all the way down into the pot it kind of keeps the soil a bit too moist as well which I'm sure you could argue just by having the moss touching the soil it, it would do that but I haven't really noticed any issues from when I do it like this Yeah, that's good. 
very good. Okay, cool. So, got my pot, got my moss pole ready for action. I'm going to be putting some soil in the bottom of this pole just to make it a little bit easier to get in. And I'm just using Monstera and Philodendron soil from Soil Ninja, my normal sort of stuff. And I like using this especially for moss pole stuff because like it is insanely barky like super chunky and really nice works perfectly for when you need a little bit more like drainage like when you're using moss poles which a lot of monsteras and philodendrons want so it does make sense that they have done this Let's put that in there. Ha. Ha ha ha. Good stuff. And then this is a little bit too long. So I might cut some of it off. And then I can have some wet sticks propagating. Dink. Okay, cool. Made that choice. <laughs> but just gonna put this down into the pot. So hopefully it roots. I am not guaranteeing that it will. I'm not sure it will. But hopefully it will. And it'll like keep the plant a little bit more secure in there. Because I'm not tying this moss pole to the pot, which I normally do with the sort of wire mesh ones because I have a little bit more space to do so. Whereas in this one, I don't have as much. So it's a bit like, I don't think it works quite as well. Eh, it is pretty steady, but it's still not perfect. So I need to do something to make sure it stays in a little bit. There we go. So that's the start, I guess, of my new moss pole for this one. Very exciting. And now I want to put the extension on top of it. So this is where like it gets a bit adjustable. So you can see on this, there's multiple different holes. You can put these little notches in and that means when you're doing the pole, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want, which is extremely helpful. So I just pre-fold these a little bit because I find it a lot easier to get in. Ooh! You need support or a heavy pot or something to stay upright. Um. Yeah, so on this one, I think I'm on the second to tightest. So when I put it together, I could put it as loose as that and in theory as tight as that but i'm going for about there which makes sense i think for what i'm doing and oh should i try some tree fern fiber mixed in this i'm gonna try it i'm gonna try it let me get that on a second Okay, okay. So I don't have tons and tons of tree fern fiber, 
but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this moss that I had from like taken out from the bottom of the pole use that to start with mix in some tree fern fiber because I've heard this is a really good combination like I said I've not tried it before but there's time for everything to hopefully get this to stay quite moist not that I've had any issues with this one it's been in my living room and that tends to stay the ones in there I tend to be really good at keeping moist whereas the ones in the office I'm really bad at keeping moist because even on days when Joe's not around I'm just not good at it so I could pack it a little bit tighter with more moss some in here which we'll do cool and now I can close her up They can be a little bit finicky, these little notches, but once you kind of get used to them, they kind of click into place and we're locked and loaded. Dee -dee -dee. There we go. And I've left a little bit of a gap on the bottom and I've left these little things on where I took them off before. Ooh. Ha ha. I just got an Apple Watch because I'm running, which it's fun, but I'm using it to track my runs now, which is fun. And so it's fun to get new notifications there. And then I'm going to put this so these little spikes go down the sides of this one. And it overlaps a tiny little bit. like that and there is a little bit of a gap in there so I am gonna stuff just a little bit of moss into it because I have moss that's stuffable and then I can push this little guy which is kind of going off the edge back onto more of the middle of the pole in hopes that it reattaches a bit better, stops veering off to the side. Does anyone else find that their dubias kind of veer off to the sides? I don't know if it's just like a common dubia thing, but I feel like it is. They just kind of want to go <laughs> sideways for some reason. There we go. And I'll use one of these sort of pin staple things to pull this leaf over and get it more towards the middle. Because otherwise it just it's going to keep leaning off of this side, which it already is a little bit. It's like definitely not centered. So if we can let's get this one to come back towards the center, that would be awesome. But yeah, that was that was that was easy. I've kind of been procrastinating this one for a minute because uh, it just feels like a lot of work. I think it's just messy work with moss poles. Moss just gets everywhere and it's kind of a pain. But once you get over that messiness, it's absolutely fine. And now I have a lot more pole room and I'll put my like cup with holes in it. Maybe I'll get a better one because this one's a bit broken. It's got a crack in it. But yeah, I'll get a bit of a better cup to put this on. I could have not filled this pole all the way up to the top, but I feel like at the rate this <laughs> this plant is growing, it's gonna get to the top so quickly, unless it suddenly changes because it's getting cooler and darker. But even then, 
like our home's not getting that much colder and it's got more grow lights on it because they're on for longer so this is my new dubia which i'm actually kind of okay with very excited about cool let's put her back in her spot so i've got this moon pot which i think will be perfect it's a little bit short but it doesn't really matter too too much so see if this fits yeah that'll do it's okay that it's a little bit short because the pot's black so you don't really notice it but that and then I'm gonna go carefully in there unsquish those leaves and we're in Honestly, one of the most difficult things about doing any sort of plant stuff for me is the cleanup because like it just makes so much of a mess. So much of a mess. And like I know I've got a potting mat down, but it's like I, I definitely need to hoover as well now because I did like a big job which like just makes a mess. And it's just really annoying. <laughs> and I don't want to do it because I, I don't want to clean my house every five seconds when I'm doing plant stuff, but like I constantly feel like I need to in order to make sure my house just isn't an absolute freaking pigsty. So I think I'm going to put that dubia cutting in the prop box. Not that I've had any sort of luck with propping dubia in a prop box, but there's no harm in trying, I guess. Maybe I'll bring it to the swap and see if somebody else wants to try it. But yeah, I've just not had any success doing this like that. This prop box is like massively overgrown at this point. Like look at all this fresh moss. Look at that. How gorgeous is that? I'm basically like regrowing loads of moss, which is fun. Um, but I've got tons in here actually that I probably should take out before I do anything else. Like my variegated Syndapsis Jade Satin which has hella roots on it. And I'm debating whether or not I want to put it into soil or like semi-hydro or something. I think it'd be fine with both, to be honest. But I think I don't like Syndapsis in semi-hydro as much as I like it in, in soil. So I'll probably end up putting this one in soil. It's definitely ready for it. So I should probably do that. But I'm nervous because I want it to stay in like a really hydrated box because this is basically like a 100% humidity box because it is a prop box. So, oh, uh, is, uh, yeah, I gotta take this one out, which I can do. And then I should probably take this one as well. Um, this is my Monstera Obliqua Peru, which I've had for a minute now. And I think it is extremely rooted in there, which is great. But I want to get it on to a pole. Because I was debating about putting this one onto a tree fern fiber pole right away. But I wasn't, like, because I hadn't tried tree fern fiber before, I didn't want to, like, immediately go to that and have it not work out. So that's why I didn't end up doing it that way. So I'm just making sure there's no pests on here. Cause I feel like there's pests. There's like that little bit, I don't know if you can tell, but some of the leaves look like ever so slightly damaged. Come on, focus. 
they look like there's a little bit of damage on them which looks like it could be from pests but I don't see any I mean if there's pests in this box <laughs> that's gonna be freaking annoying because it's like can I have pests do I have to have pests everywhere like is that a requirement because um, I really don't want to have pests everywhere I mean they're living absolutely fine in this box if if it does have pests so <sighs> it'll be fine but I should get this onto something because you can see it desperately needs it do, do, do. just getting as much of the moss off as possible because the moss can stay in here it's perfectly good living moss this moss is the solar ninja stuff and it is live moss which is awesome so if you do keep things in like a very humid environment it will just continue to grow and multiply which is pretty freaking awesome it makes things like it yeah it's just really good it doesn't do so much of that in moss pole land because it dries out a bit too much from my experience so it doesn't grow live in the same way I suppose if I kept it a little bit more moist I could probably make that happen but I don't need to I think I might also might cut those apart because they're both rooted separately so I can do that just chop this here da -da -da. Um, and I've got a top cut then and a middle cut which this is this was already a middle cut and so I don't know if it'll grow again or not probably should have thought about that before I cut it but um alas I've done it now it's fine um <laughs> and I will put this on a, some sort of little pole I think I have one that I can probably use for this so I'll put that out and then this is Escaletto from my original plant ages and ages ago which oh my goodness this is so tangly these roots um so rooted in here i haven't gone through these prop boxes in ages and i really should do it more often i kind of forget they exist a little bit though so whoops um it does have a bit of like rotted stem you can see just the joint is still alive and we don't need these pieces so i'm going to cut these off and bin them because we don't need that but this I could definitely put on a pole and it would probably grow really really well as well so I guess I can get this one on a pole and this is also more escaletto that I could put on a pole should I put them together probably and again just very well rooted stuff in here look at those so rooted i really should have like done something about these far earlier but it's just not being a priority for me This one does have thrips on it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see them in there. But just along there, there's some thrips which suck. Ooh, there's actually quite a lot. Maybe what I will do with the stuff that's been in here because it's not been in soil it doesn't have that like good natural soil microbiome that I've been cultivating elsewhere and so I'm not going to feel as guilty about it if I spray them with Provanto does that sound like a good idea? I feel like it's a good idea so <sighs> that is what I would do I guess but that's good we can take these out I have no clue what this is. It looks probably like an epipremnum. Like just a normal green form panatum. I don't really care. 
for it, so I'm gonna throw that away. Like, ugh, I feel really bad doing that, but if it does have pests on it, like the other ones do, and I don't really fancy treating it, it doesn't matter, so I can throw that away. And then, otherwise in here, I think I saw, yeah, a single Monster Dubia node. <laughs> um, but I'm just gonna remix this a little bit, because the perlite's kind of all settled on the bottom. Which is fine, it doesn't really matter. But, it's nice to give it a mix. Ooh, what's this? More of whatever... Ooh, maybe it's Sebu Blue. Maybe that's a Sebu Blue? No, it's too green to be Sebu Blue. Though I have had a lot of Sebu Blue cuttings. This one can also go in the bin. It's fine, it doesn't really matter. Um, I feel like I just have so many plants at this point, I don't mind... Actually, this is going away as well. I don't mind putting some in the bin. It doesn't make too big of a difference to me. I just have, I have a lot, so I'm not worried about trying to maintain such a high amount of plants. I feel like that's an unreasonable thing for me to try and do. Ooh, what's this? I don't know what this is, but it's kind of cute. Oh, is this Dubia? I think that's a little Dubia bit. Pretty adorable. Um, I don't care about it. <laughs> Oh, I really should go through these prop boxes far more frequently. I've just not, and that's fine. So, where did I put those little cuttings? Oh, yeah, here. I'm just gonna lay these down in here, and if they root, they root, and if they don't, they don't. That's gonna be fine. But this box is basically empty now, which is crazy. I could, I could, I could make it, yes, 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 that's what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm not actually going to put those in there. Oh, do I want to keep this moss? Because if it's got thrips in it, but it's so healthy. It's okay, I can make more healthy moss. I am going to clean out this box, and because I said I was worried about having the other ones shifting to a less humid environment because my home isn't 100% humidity it's more like 60 which that's a huge jump in humidity I I'm gonna turn this into a sort of like transition box so in between going from moss I'm gonna pot them in soil and I could put them in this box and keep it really like really intensely moist for a little while that's the plan that's a good plan Cool, so I'm gonna empty this out and give it a good wash. Got my Pravanto here, and I'm honestly just gonna go for it. I want to talk a little bit about Provanto and my sort of pest issues at the minute because some of you might have seen the like a short I did where I was talking about how I'm just like really tired. I am so freaking tired of having pests and it feels like not every plant but a lot of plants in my collection are struggling right now with pests and I'm on like I'm aware of most of them but the amount of work it's gonna take to get rid of them all naturally feels like an insurmountable mountain. Like, it feels insane. 
and I don't think that it's completely reasonable to make myself do that when there is a slightly easier solution and those of you in the comments of that reel like I really appreciate you being there and supporting me and saying that you're gonna like support no matter what but still like want me to stay strong I appreciate that and I am going to be doing my very freaking best on that it's just it feels like a lot and when essentially it's my entire collection at stake if I don't get these plant like pests under control I could be risking losing <laughs> a lot of money and time and investment that I've put in to this hobby and so I do like my mind's going both ways of like I could just I could just spray them with Pervanto and it'll be fine or I could stick with it and like push really hard in the other direction and go like even more natural but the thing is, even if I do go the Pravanto route, which I know is not good for me, it's not good for Cleo, it's not good for anyone, I should probably spray it outside, but not because it's not good for the environment either. Like, I, I shouldn't be using it at all. I get that. But also it works. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of a difficult situation and it's one that I'm... I'm struggling to, like, get my brain around and like figure out what is best for me in my collection and like I said because these plants that I just pulled out of that prop box they're not in soil they don't have that good natural microbiome they've not had predatory mites on them previously and they'll be going straight back into that like sealed box it should be absolutely fine and it's not gonna destroy the hard work I've done to the rest of my collection because the like the predatory mites aren't gonna be in that box and like for at least two or three weeks while the like Provanto runs its course and if they're still struggling with pests after those two to three weeks I can either repeat the process or try and go in with a bit more of a natural method instead um and we'll figure that out in due time but I think it just makes a bit more sense because I'm not ruining any of the hard work I'm doing with those plants. It, it's, it's not a, it's not, it's not a problem, I don't think. But it, it does feel like very difficult lately to deal with all of them because I, I ordered extra predatory mites and everything to put more on my plants and I'm just hoping that it works out because I need it to work out because I don't want to have to get rid of a bunch of plants because of it and like it's getting to the point where if I see one that's like heavily damaged I'm just like that's going in the bin because I can't I can't deal with that anymore I don't need that pressure in my life I don't I don't need that around I is it worth saving to me unless it's a very 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 special plant to me probably not so it is just ah it's just one of those things that it's it's awkward and it's difficult and I feel bad that I'm not sticking to my goals entirely but I guess it's just how life is and life is hard sometimes and plant collecting is not necessarily an easy hobby especially when it comes to pests um it is a whole living like thing that we are doing here so <sighs> yeah it's fine i think i'm just getting down on myself about it a lot recently which can be quite tough so yeah i've just gotta stay positive and do my best and that is all that i can hope for as long as i'm doing my best i'm doing enough so yeah i'm just waiting for those plants to dry off now and once they are a bit drier i will then pot them up and put them in that prop box in the meantime i'm going to drink my tea and have a bit of a break because it's still quite early um so i i, I get to I did, I did a hard work thing, <laughs> oh, it just, that is not a hard work thing, but my brain's like still quite tired from the weekend, we had a very social weekend this past weekend, um, and so my brain needs a little bit of recuperation time, so 
have a wee bit of a break, maybe like a 10 minute one, finish this tea, and then we can get get going on to something else. Just gonna do a tiny bit of watering now. Just my sort of normal moss pole ones. They are still quite damp. I feel like I'm needing to water them less and less now that the weather is turning and it's not as just like warm and bright anymore, which is a little bit sad obviously, but it's fine. But I'm just making sure that everything is nice and watered, mostly doing the moss poles because that's what I need to water pretty much like every few days still, just because that's, that's how these things work. They just take a little bit more than the soil. They dry out a lot faster. And I am still watering with fertilizer water. That's not gonna change, I don't think, anytime soon because I, I just, I water all year round with it and it's absolutely fine. So yeah, I think my plants will enjoy the little boost that it gives. I've just got a couple in here, mostly moss poles. The main bits that I have to do are in the bedroom because I have not done those in a little bit. And I know I seriously need to. Um, but yeah, just just getting getting stuff watered is good to make sure that everything is doing well. Totally spilled water everywhere. Whoops. I'm good at my job. <laughs> My Hoya Rosita is flowering again. It's bloomed, I think this is the third or fourth time it's bloomed, but it's all been just from this one peduncle. It's not got any others throughout that are blooming. So, dunno what that's about, but I'm not mad at it. I'm just glad I get some, cause they're freaking cute and they smell good too. I am just sitting down to have some lunch now. I'm having couscous with some vegetables and feta. And I'm gonna do that and then I can get to packing those plants for this afternoon's post office trip slash errand time slash run. The raw onions in the couscous started to give me the ick. So I made myself a quesadilla as well um, to tide myself over for the rest of lunch. And then we can get to the planty stuff again. Okie doke. So, I have some plants here that I need to pack up for shipping. And I've got some Amazon boxes. I try and reuse boxes where at all possible, just because I really hate, ooh, that was fun. I really hate like, I don't want to buy new ones just for this. Not exactly sure why the camera is not in focus here, but instead of subjecting you to 30 minutes of me talking about these plants out of focus, I just decided to speed through it. So sorry about that, but it's pretty normal packaging for me. So I've just gotten dressed, ready to go out to the post office, but I was ordering postage online for my parcels and to drop them off at the post office, for some reason, cost extra money, and then the delivery office, which was free, is closed. So, not gonna do that, and I'm just gonna get them collected for free tomorrow, save me money, save me time. But I do still need to go out. I am going to drop off a library book at the library, go for my little run. Um, I'm trying to run every day, so I'm gonna run. When I say run, I mean slow jog, but still. Um, <laughs> exercise is exercise, and I'm proud of myself for it. And then I need to pick up a parcel, which is something very exciting that we can open together. 
and I can share with you because I'm really excited about it. So yeah, I'm gonna pick that up. Cool, let's go. So I have just finished my run now and I picked up my parcel, which I'm excited to open when I get home, but I'm walking home now. I did 5k, otherwise I would run home, but I'm already quite tired. You can tell I'm very sweaty and red, but because I did so well, I am going to get myself a bubble tea on the way home because I deserve a little treat. Okay, I'm home and showered. Sorry, I'm still a little bit red faced. But I am going to open up this parcel, which I am so excited about. So, this, does anyone recognize this packaging? <laughs> if you're in the States, you might. But, essentially, I have a new Soltech grow light. So I actually reached out to Soltech because I saw that they created a sort of a bar light. They're known very well for their sort of pendant lights, but I don't really have space within my home to do pendant lights. Joe doesn't allow me to drill into the ceiling because we have asbestos in it, which I know is a bad thing, but also I would wear a mask and I would put, take Cleo out of the room, so it'd be fine. But I'm not allowed to drill into the ceiling. Rightly so, I think. And so I wanted to try this one because it's different and it's a bar light. But basically, I reached out to them and asked if I could try this and share it with all of you, my experience, because it is a very interesting thing to give a go to. So straight off of the bat, it is really, really sleek looking. It looks kind of similar in vibe to the mother grow light, the plant spectrum ones that go vertically. I've also, oh my God, look at this packaging. How freaking cute are these little like beveled, like I almost don't want to throw it away, it's so pretty. Um, <laughs> but it comes with this, as well as obviously the end bits that you, oh my God, is it magnetic? Um, sorry. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. So this one's obviously got the cord on it and it has these little end pieces, which I don't know if it'll focus, which I think I can take the sticker off of and it becomes sticky. I might also be able to, um, I think it comes with a screw option as well. If, yes, so if I wanted to screw screw this little piece onto the wall, I could then slide this into it and it would, I believe, I believe that's how it works. Yeah, yeah, that would work. I could slide it in and attach it to screws. Um, but yes, oh my goodness, I am so excited about this. I'm like, I'm obsessed with their branding. And like, I'm not just saying that because they've sent me this for free. Like, I just think it is so beautiful. Everything they have in here is so clean and like sleek and simple. And yeah, it's really, really exciting. Also, it comes with a five year warranty, which is fabulous. And obviously because I'm in the UK, mine comes with a UK adapter plug because the original plug is US. Um, I think they are a US based company, so if you are in the US, you like you can get them really easily. If you're in the UK, obviously they've sent it to me with this. I'm pretty sure you can buy them in the UK with the adapters as well. If you're buying it from like I don't think it costs any extra to get the adapter. I'm going to double check on that though, um, just to make sure and I'll put it on the screen whether or not it is. But oh my goodness, I am so, so excited to give this a proper try. I'm tempted to replace one of the lights in my Ikea cabinet with this. 
just to test it out for a little while. What do you think? Should I do that? Where do you guys think I should put it? But basically wherever I do put it, I'm going to try it out for a couple weeks and see how I like it. Um, I'll be sure to share my journey with it. I'm pretty positive I will. I mean, I've heard it's actually dimmable as well. Like you can tap it and it dims, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to give this, giving this a go. If anyone else wants to give it a go, I do have an affiliate with, link with them. Though, like I said, I have not tried it yet, but if you did want to get your hands on one for a discounted price, here's the link and you can give it a go. But obviously no pressure, just in case you're interested in uh, giving them a go for yourself. So yeah, so, so pleased with this. I just need to figure out where I want to put it. So many options. So I'm making these like super duper mini lazy poles, which they're half an A4 sheet or an A4 sheet cut nearly in half, not quite. But I'm going to use those so they'll fit in the box still. But I'll be able to get some of these roots hopefully carrying on onto a pole rather than just like nothingness. So cool. Let's put some soil in here. Go. and then some moss for the pole part which because it's a lazy pole you don't need to be like super exact with it um, that can go there and then I'll just wrap that around look at that tiny little baby moss pole. That's freaking cute. Hopefully I can encourage it to grow well like this. I might just forget about these for a while. Who knows? <laughs> we will find out probably in a couple months time. So that's one. Very good. That's second one down. And then the last one I gotta do is the um, synapsis, which I need to take all of the moss off the roots. Should be easy enough. They tend to have quite thick roots. So it's pretty easy to distinguish. And I'm gonna get a bigger pot again because it was in this little one before and I only grabbed smaller ones. So let me grab a bigger pot. And I'm just gonna continue to use Monster and Philodendron soil. I know Synapsis is neither of those, but they tend to do absolutely fine in this soil. There we go. So now just going to set up the box and I think I can just plop them in here like very easily. The only way I can think of to keep it very, very humid is to literally have cups of water in here. And because this box is normally underneath a grow light, it will get warm so that like so the water might evaporate off and become humidity um, and it's pretty much sealed this box doesn't like i'm pretty sure it's fairly airtight it's got these handles and this to lock it into place so do that and i've got a bit of a middle ground sort of acclimation box So I have known for a while that my Hoya Polynura is not doing well. And I am pretty, pretty sure I have found flat mites on it. So I wanted to show you what I see and then like check it with the microscope to make sure. But I am pretty freaking positive I found flat mites on it. I just need to find the one that was like super heavily flat mitey because it like 
yeah, it's not doing well at the minute and that's like really unfortunate. So I haven't looked at it with a microscope yet, but let me find a good leaf to share with you that's got flop mites on it. But basically I've just been seeing this one not doing well for quite a while. And that's kind of how I've known that it is, it is not doing well. So this is what I see. It's really, really difficult, but I'll put arrows in of where I'm seeing the flat mites. You might just about be able to see them moving. Maybe. But I'm pretty sure there's flat mites on these two like leaves at the joins. Let me see if I can get in a little bit closer. So here I'm using the 0.5. And you can see them moving around, but they're like definitely smaller than spider mites. Oh my goodness, there's so many of them here. All those little red dots, I'm pretty sure are flat mites, not spider mites. Because they're like too small to be spider mites. Which is pretty crazy. That's even closer. Look at all of them. It's basically all of those orange dots. And there's some on this one as well, but not as many. Yeah, they're like, it, they're covering this thing. Which is not good. Ugh, gross. Now, let me show you what they look like with the microscope. I will make sure to link this in the description if you're fancy trying it for yourself and having a look. It's definitely helpful. It sucks, but it, it works. So let me just, let me just get this on and we can look around. Look at all of them. That's not even the full zoom. That's not even the full zoom. But they're so slow moving. There we go. Look. Uh. And there's just like loads around this stem. Those might be eggs, those also could be dead ones. I mean this is the main guy that's moving on this one. Don't know if that's an egg or a dead one. Look at that. So I obviously need to treat this plant basically, which is super duper frustrating, but fine. But I think this just like reminds me that there's so like, there's probably loads of plants in my collection. Oh my goodness. Literally almost any leaf I go on to has at least one, if not more. Oh my goodness. <gasps> oh, were those actual spider mites? Oh my goodness, that terrified me. I think that's like the difference between a spider mite and a flat mite in sort of size. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that's either a flat mite or a predatory mite. It could be either. I cannot tell from the top of my head. But then all of those orange ones are all flat mites. Look at all of them. 
I definitely would have noticed these on my Hoyas if I had checked them. Like, I, I, I a thousand percent would have noticed these on my Hoyas when I checked them originally. What are they doing? Taking like little bits of the tissue around. Ugh, whatever. So annoying. I mean, it is what it is. These are also almost microscopic. Like, I couldn't... I can't see these with my naked eye. I mean, I can, but, like, very, very, very barely. Oh, yeah. So, I obviously need to treat this one as well. And probably, like, loads of other plants within my collection. Which is really unfortunate. Like, I knew I had them in my cabinet. And I hoped I didn't have them elsewhere, but it turns out that I do. So I'm probably, it would be wise of me to go over my entire collection. With the sulfur, I don't particularly fancy doing it, but the sulfur does also help treat thrips. And I know I've got a thrips problem, so maybe it wouldn't be like the worst thing in the world to do everything. I think it's going to take a long time though to do everything. It'll be an absolute process, unfortunately. So, yeah, we, I don't know if I will do everything or not. We will see. But for now, I'm going to do this one. Uh, yeah, just this one, just this one right now. That's all I can fathom. I don't think I can do more than this one today because they're just such a faff to spray with um, sulfur. So. Just gonna do this one for now. <laughs> spray bottle completely stopped spraying so I had to resort to pouring the sulfur liquid on the plant. I do not think that's the right way to do it but it was the last of what I had to do and it, it just had to be what it was in the end. So I've just kind of not done all that much this afternoon planty wise. I've done a bit more admin things and got some other like random bits and bobs done but for the most part it was just chilling and then when Joe came home we had some dinner and went for a walk and now we are just chilling and I think I'm going to read my book and get ready for bed. I'm currently reading this which I'm not very far in but it's okay so far. Um, I've heard really good things about it, so excited to finish reading this. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna read for a little bit and probably go to sleep. So this is where I will be ending the video. I <laughs> feel like I got a lot done today. Um, it might not seem like it, or maybe it does, I don't know. Like, I... I I find making videos like this really helps me get my stuff done and like do the plant tours that I'm not looking forward to because I'm like oh I should share with them like what's going on and everything and so I kind of force myself to do the plant tours by making these videos. Um, so I really hope that you're enjoying it and it's helped you get to do some of your plant tours that you might not have been looking forward to doing as well. But yeah. That's, that's, that was my day of plant chore good fun times. 
Before I end this video, I do want to say a big thank you to the newest member of the Good Growing Fam over on Patreon, Jordan. Thank you so much for joining. I really hope you love it over there and get to really experience all of the fun content. And don't forget to join the Discord chat. That's another fun thing that we have as patrons. We've got a little community where we can share plant stuff together and help each other out and just get excited about plant stuff um, together, which is really, really fun. In addition to bonus content and live chats and stuff like that. So if anyone else is interested in joining, it's three pounds or about four dollars or four euros a month. Um, and you get all of the stuff for that price, one low, low price. You can think of it as buying me a coffee or running one of my grow lights for a month um, because it costs just about that to run one of my 13 grow lights. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for joining Jordan. I really appreciate it. And to the rest of you, thank you all so much for being here and watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. If I touched on anything here and you've got any questions, let me know down below and I will do my best to answer all of them. And yeah, subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to keep growing. Bye!